everybody. I am super excited to talk to you guys today about my natural shower, which was built only with natural materials. It's clay, sand, straw, bamboo, and lime to create a completely natural waterproof shower. With this shower, I mix different global traditions such as wattle and dab, which can be seen all throughout Africa and India and even Ireland and the UK with a lime tadalac plaster that you can see throughout Northern Africa and the Southern uh, European Mediterranean region as well. So by mixing all of these techniques together, then you can get something that's both modern and resistant and natural and beautiful. So I hope you enjoy this first video of building my natural shower and follow along to catch the rest. All right, we've got our hole set up. So this is where the bamboo will go. And once we put bamboo that's vertically in here, we can create our cage that goes horizontally. And then we can set up our wall. <laughs> Y aquí no va, la puerta va de ese ancho. Está bien. De ese ancho va la puerta. Uh -huh. Ahí está, ahora sí. Se seca de una vez. So I guess there's a dog that's been sleeping in the shower area. He um, must have been dropped off by somebody. He looks very old, almost like a shepherd dog. I'm not sure the type, but he seems so sweet and harmless. Um, sometimes if the dogs are very old, um, the people will just dump them off in isolated areas, and that's where we live. So that dog, um, every time we come in the morning, he runs off and he's, he's somewhere around here, but he's harmless. Um, Hopefully we can find them and maybe give them a little bit of food. Okay, so we finished building the cage for the shower. So I put together this design because I wanted to have lots of curves. Um, the main part of the house, which is done in the traditional Casa de Quinta style, everything is at right angles to each other. And I wanted this part of the house that I've um, designed and architected and engineered to have lots more curves and be more feminine and flowy just so you can get you know that contrast you have the masculine side the tradition and then you have the new but it's also flowy on this side so I really like it I like the shape of it even though we have this uh, curve at the top I might even you know add another different curve because once this is just to hold it together you don't have to stick to this design I'm gonna carve out little inlets for us to put our our shower things in there um, so working with Cobb the amazing thing is that you can make whatever design that you want you're not limited to any specific shape if you want to do something that's completely free form you don't even have to have a bamboo cage this just helps to build quicker so in India in Central America and Africa they'll typically use a bamboo base for their natural building and that helps to build up quicker because you don't have to wait for the lower layers to dry. You can just wrap it around the bamboo as you go up. In Ireland and the UK you might have wood as the base that's woven and that's something called wattle and daub. And when you have that then you know it's the same kind of process except you're kind of plastering over that wood because it's so tight together and it's more of a plaster than building up you know chunky cob wall. So I think I'm going to just let them focus on this today while I work on uh, fixing the plaster in the other room. Um, but they're going to build this up. I'll cut out the inlets once it's almost done and make sure that I have the kind of final design and shape that I want. But they're going to start stacking this. It's the same process that we did for the rest of the house, the main walls. And um, it just helps us have another, you know, natural divider within our space. If you didn't want to use a base like bamboo or wood, then you have to have the lower layers dry. That can take a little bit longer. So when you want to build something quick, it's good to have a base to hang on to.
So if you're going to add a new earthen structure to something that has been there for a while, for example, this wall has been up for about three years and we're adding this new wall, you want to make sure that you wet it so that it sticks. It needs to be wet a lot, especially if it's very, very dry. Otherwise, what you've made will separate from that old part. So you want to wet it. And we've also wet the floor here so that the new mud plaster, the barro, will stick to it. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, we've got some leftover bottle here, but we have finished the shower wall. So this is going into the bathroom. This is the shower wall. I wanted it to be curved. I wanted to create more feminine um, designs because the main part of the house is all at right angles. That's the traditional Spanish colonial quincha design. But I really wanted this to have um, more feminine curves in the bathroom space and feel more natural. So this is this is the curve. I had them make this a bit thicker here because I'm going to carve out some um, shelving here for us to put shampoos and soaps. So this is what it's looking like now. Lots of mud, lots of clay. I want to put a nice stone floor in here, but I still have to go towards um, Panama City to find the stone, stone guy. Probably will cover up that center tower there with um, mud so that it doesn't get too moldy with the moisture. So it came out great. I think this turned out really beautifully and this is going to have a nice uh, lime plaster over it and then this will probably have some kind of design because it's a big wall. I want there to be some design here. Um, maybe some candles. I don't know. I have to figure it out but lots of options and I love it. Came out real nice. So you can see just from how much pressure I'm applying, how solid these walls are. So it's made out of mud, but with the straw and the sand, these walls are solid. They are tough. If you want to break them down, you've got to really apply some force. Um, but with a little bit of force, then you can reshape and recreate and do renovations pretty easily. So these are the kind of designs that I am cutting out in the shower. I want it to kind of be Moroccan inspired, so this is all made out of mud. We're going to lime plaster it, but before we lime plaster it, I'm cutting out these little spaces. We can put our shampoos and soaps and things in here. And I'm going to do two of them. And then we'll have a nice little shower wall. And there's some things that we have left to do. So this will be the valve for the um, shower head that's going to be there. We're going to have to cover that pipe with some new barro mud mix. Uh, we've got this little seat that we're going to have to fill with some tosca, some uh, rock, and then cover that with a new layer of the barro as well. We've got our inlets to cut um, for our shampoos and soaps. And then I bought these really cool um, pine windows from Etsy. They're not really windows. They're actually just supposed to be like hanging pieces for the wall. And we're going to put them back to back. 
and then connect them, you know, put a little piece of wood on each little part so that from the inside and the outside we'll have this uh, window. And I'm not going to put glass in between because the idea is to have a place for the steam to escape because this is all kind of closed here so I want to make sure we don't have any humidity problems. So I want to put this window kind of up here in this area above the shower so that the steam can leave and it's such a beautiful design. I'm very happy with it. So this is the bathroom. Cut this little hole in the wall. So because this was all a dark kind of corner space, it made it look a little bit dark in here, but it's amazing. Just one little light in that corner, it's brightened up this whole space. And then once we put lime plaster on these walls, it'll really brighten up the space even more because right now the walls are a dark brown color in the shower because they're still missing the mud plaster. Now a question that I usually get is what about the cracks? Do you worry about the cracks with you know waterproofing? There's going to be an issue with moisture getting in there. No there won't be. We're going to take a little bit of mud plaster and you patch. So you can see this is um, this, so this is the original wall here. I don't know if you could tell. This is the original and then this is some like lighter color. This is some patching that we did. So we smoothed out some of the cracks and you expect cracks to be on your first pass, not as much on the second and the later one. So once you have uh, the first one done, that's kind of your base, your foundation, and then you could add in mud plaster to fill in these little cracks. Then after that, you put on the lime plaster. So this is what the lime plaster looks like, the first base coat. It's kind of sandpapery feeling. If you touch it, there's stuff that falls off, little grits. So this is not what you want in the final piece, especially not if you're doing something that's like a water heavy surface, like a shower or a sink. You want to add another layer that's on top of this that's smooth and then use the Tadalac technique with the black olive oil soap, uh, which is essentially a very concentrated form of olive oil that they make in Provence in France. And for some reason, the reaction, well not for some reason, there's actually a very specific reason, but the black olive oil reacts with the not dry, the slightly wet lime and it creates this uh, new compound which is essentially like um, solid limestone. And so just like how stone is waterproof, um, this is going to be waterproof as well. If you want to see how I turned my mud walls into a completely waterproof natural shower using only natural ingredients without any synthetics, please subscribe so you don't miss that video and like and comment so we can keep spreading the word on the amazing properties and creativity possible with natural building.